Glenn Baisley, and I'm with Mike Lane. Hello. And for the first time, Frank Catalanato, who we're lucky enough to get here for the commentary. No problem. What's going on, guys? When we did the original commentary many, many, many moons, fall moons ago, <gasps> it was during a freaking blizzard. So yes. actually, we didn't get everybody we wanted to on the commentaries. But now, for its 10 year anniversary, we're finally able to do that. So uh, to kick it off, I guess let's talk about why 10 years later I'm doing it. Why? Why, George Lucas? Why? <laughs> so, season one, we wrapped up with the return of the Jimmy Wayne Garrick character that probably most people are not familiar with unless they've actually followed along with by movies over the years. But I thought it would be kind of fun to bring Jimmy back. And because I moved and I'm completely broke since I own a house now, we weren't able to do a second season. And I said, you know what? I want to put some new content on it. Let's go ahead and return back to the roots of Jimmy Wayne Garrick do a prequel, it's 10 years later, 10th anniversary, remaster it in HD. It's a little cropping going on there as a result of the remaster, but um, I thought it would be a fun way to, to bring it back to most people that haven't seen it. And in case anyone feels bad about not remembering uh, the character or anything like that, don't because I don't remember the character and I play the guy. <laughs> so, good question for you is today we just shot a new ending. Um, that hopefully everybody has seen. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen... Uh, oh my Paul god, I had hair! And Sorry. And Geo-Killing. And of course watch this and you're listening to the commentary first. But So what's it like... Well, last year you kind of returned to Jimmy but in a sort of a more serious tone. What was it like to return back to Jimmy ten years later? Well, at first last year I was a little taken aback because I didn't think the character was going to be Jimmy. You wanted him to be Jimmy after everything was written. Um, so I was a little taken aback and kind of hesitant, hesitant to doing it, but then the more and more I got into it, the more I figured out what I can do with him, the direction I would like him to go, the tone I would like him to go, and now I really dig it. I, I really hope we do something with Jimmy, Jimmy again soon. There's so much to be explored with him, um, but it, in a different way. This, the Tenement did have its dramatic moments, but it was more slapstick oriented, which was fine, which was great. It, and Jimmy's one of my favorite characters to play ever. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm hoping we get to do more of Jimmy just so I can explore the darker and dramatic side. And we've talked about bringing Jimmy back over the years. Yeah. I, I even contemplated doing a Tenement 2 where it would pick up moments after the where Full Moon Rising, the, the segment from Tenement, ends. And we talked about Jimmy getting thrown out of the back of a van yeah. with by werewolves and then he falls in love with a dog. Yeah, oh, it would be even funnier. <laughs> so, yeah. To do it really slapstick. And we've entertained the notion and actually just talked to Frank recently about possibly coming back in some capacity a la America World from London right. in, in a, some kind of future episode. So, so Frank, um, I think this might, because this is going to be a good story and it, it'll probably segue into your intro and, and as we're watching the video or the fans are watching okay. the video. So let's talk about that fateful day, the mm -hmm. ride up from Long Island, where at first... The realization set in that your character Frank uh, is gay. So we crossed over the bridge. I'm thinking, okay, road trip, goofy movie. I'm gonna get my beer and my fried chicken comp. This ought to be wonderful. I don't read the script, and I never read anything. I don't read my mail. I don't read anything, especially back then. So he's explaining the character in more detail to me as we're getting closer to where you're going to shoot the scene. And um, he mentioned, you know, like, you're going to be my gay boyfriend. I'm like, I almost stopped the car. <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 wait. huh? <laughs> I don't mind getting killed and cut the blood. And what's with the... We get a, and then I'm, and all of a sudden, I'm really interested in the script. Uh, I want to look through the whole thing line by line. 
and, and originally, I wouldn't have wanted to make out with make out with you anyway. Well, so there. Originally, we talked about the scene at the end, and I guess we'll talk about it more when we when we get to it. But we talked about um, I think they were, didn't the original script call for Frank to take his shirt off? Yes, yes, yeah. it did. But Frank <laughs> Frank took creative license on that and said no. Well, I I, I I had a friend that said, you know what? I'll do the homosexual part, fine. I'll do the you're gonna rip out my neck thing, fine, and I'll come on to you, whatever. The there's no way there's ever gonna be any screenshots or stills of me with no shirt on, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not even in his personal life. We can't find any. I've and, known him forever. And you were you're telling me a, a little anecdote the other day about um, going for a job. Oh yeah. Uh, this is this is the cool part about having the same name as a famous baseball player. So I go to work for these. I go to work for large companies. Like I work Cablevision corporate office. I currently work at SAP America, which is one of the biggest software companies in the world. When you go to work for a large company like this in IT, they do um, extensive background checks. They're looking at your credit. They're doing YouTube and different social media searches on you, they're Googling your name, looking you up to see if you pop up in anything inappropriate, anything like that. So I know that if I Google my name, uh, my firewall is the fact that there is a baseball player named Frank John Catalano, so he comes from Frank J. Catalano, close to my age, which, and he's, his picture is all over the web. And he buries me in, in the results when you do a search on my name. So if you go four pages into the picture search, you will see the still shots from uh, from Full Moon Rising, and you'll see me with you know, when I had my chip tooth before I got the dump and working with the blood on my neck. And so it was just like, thank God that there's like a famous person with my name. <laughs> so when they would search it, search me up, they would say, oh yeah, you got him as a baseball player. I am never ever going to get a good a job. In any kind of highly corporatized environment ever, <laughs> well, I remember, based on the shit that I got on the internet just from the movies that I've done. Well, that's it. I remember too. Um, it was during my interview for the job I'm currently at now. I actually revealed that you know, hey, I do independent movies and horror movies and stuff. And actually, I'm, I'm really good friends now with um, Kim Bailey, who appeared uh, with her her kids in, in Lolly Girl in season one, and it was sort of the co creator of Lolly Girl. And uh, what was funny about it is she confessed to me later on. She goes, you know, had you not revealed that, I probably would never have hired you because you had some creepy shit. Yeah. I'm very thankful for the company I work for now <laughs> uh, because I don't think they checked anything before they hired me. So thank you. And, and, sp and speaking of creepy shit, just a nod about this scene. I just remember the smell. That we what was it was refried it, beans. refried beans mixed with some other stuff though, but the odor I just remember dr almost dry heaving. It was just nasty. It was right from the can, and it was just oh, it smelled like shit. Yeah. It was just nasty. I mean, you know, you, you see like in all these movies, like the actress is pea soup and stuff like that. And it was just I wanted very thick and chunky, and it was just oh, it was just nasty. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and Frank's about slip. to come up soon. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I uh, I thought it would be funny. Uh, to shave, I'm a very hairy guy, so I thought yes. it would be funny to shave all my body hair for this because I'd be playing a werewolf. And just for that one freaking joke that we did, I had to go through just the chore of trying to remove all the hair from my body. It was ridiculous. Did you shave it or did you like? I shaved it. I shaved it. Yeah, oh. which was yeah. Oh. Right. right there he is. So, so, so with your smooth let, little let me, baby Let me bottom. just say how Frank got this role. Frank got this role because we were at Chiller Theater. Frank, I was there promoting Glenn's movies. Frank was there just along for the ride. And Frank and I were just arguing uh, behind the table back and forth for the whole day. And Glenn yeah. liked it so much that he wanted to give Frank a role just based on our bantering back and forth. <laughs> so that's how Frank got it. I mean, if you haven't noticed this movie, there's a lot of nods to American Werewolf in London. And that was one of the things, like Mike said... Yeah. That just the banter back and forth, that, you know, and I and I love the scenes between the friends in America World, especially after he's dead, and that I think there's still something we could do. Yeah, and really appreciate you skyping in for this. So I know you're way far away from where we are right now, where we're doing this, but uh, I yeah. think there's still ways to to do some things creatively. I think in the future, without dragging your ass all the way in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, no problem. Man. I'm up for it. I thought this uh, it's just something fun. Uh, I bring up when I'm. Going back to the jobs is after I get to know everybody at my job, and they start sharing like odd little things about themselves. 
I bring up this movie and nobody believes me, and then they see it and they're like, you really did that? I say, yeah. <laughs> you can even find my name on IMDb. The movies, uh, you can get the disc off of a Netflix. I'm not lying. It's, it's real. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's funny, though, because, you know, I hear it all the time. I mean, even people I've worked with and people I haven't worked with, you know, actors and actresses that, you know, they don't think, oh, you know, that, oh, nobody will know about it. It's the Internet. You yeah. got, you know, and I, I say this to any actor that's out there listening, you know, don't do anything you're not comfortable with because, you know, it's the Internet is forever. Yeah. And I don't get this, though, because everybody watches movies. Everybody. Most people are big fans of movies. So if someone was in a movie, who cares? How could that right. affect you getting a job? Even if the movie was a Absolutely. little risque, who doesn't like those kind of movies? Unless you're just complete, just someone with a stick up their ass. Well, Most okay. people aren't, at least the ones that I've run into. Who I've cares? encountered quite it's a few of It's just a fucking them. movie. You know, the problem yeah. is I, re I go back to the story I told many years ago, you know, when I worked at the first film festival that was going to ban Fear of the Dark. And, you know, I remember when we finally, it was at midnight where we were allowed after all these hoops that we had to jump through to be able to show the movie uncut. And the festival director turns to me, um, you know, the, the head of the Putnam Valley Artists at the time turns to me and she goes, you know, I don't get it. She goes, you're, you're such a nice guy. Why do you create these horrible things? And I said, I'm not that person. I mean, you know, it just goes to show that people still judge a book by its cover. I mean, it's, you know, they, they think of you you know, as the, the, the material you put out. And you, you hear that all time actors walk down the street and, you know, they think yeah. they get wrapped up in the character that they play. Yeah. Well, first of all, Glenn is that person. Don't, don't well, let yeah. him, oh, don't thanks, let him, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, also I think it's based on fear. It's people that are afraid, oh, if this person sees this, he's going to think this of me, therefore I don't want anybody to see this. And it's crazy. I think most people are, are okay with it. Or I'd like to think maybe I'm wrong. I don't and, know. and I want to take a, a moment to talk about um, Herb Smith line who's mm. on screen. Um, sadly, Herb, you know, passed away uh, last year. I hadn't actually spoken to him in a, in a few, you know, a few years, probably about four or five years. But one of the coolest things that Herb did, you know, long after we had ended uh, shooting um, Tenement and Sins of the Father, which was shot in what, 2002, yeah. 2003, around that, um, he would all the time send me clippings, you know, about film festivals and stuff mm. that I could join. Just a sweet guy, really, really nice yeah. guy, and was always thinking of me, and, you know, and uh, uh, one of the coolest things he used to do was he had a place out in Arizona. He used to go in uh, for medical students who were in training, and he would go in as pretending to be a patient yeah. with different ailments and stuff that helping them training. And I always thought that was cool. And, of course, he, he was a, a museum guide director um, at the Hyde Park Museum, at the was the Roosevelt uh, Mansion, but uh, just a really, really down to earth, really cool guy, and you know he was he, he was a, without a, a a doubt my Dr. Loomis. Yeah, Herb was a trip and a really nice guy and a funny guy and a good guy to get along with. But he lived a, a long life. He, he was he was up there in yeah. age, so a long full life. Yeah, yeah. So and of course this is was my doctor at the time's daughter. Right, because and the the guy who originally played the doctor wasn't able to make it right I mean, we, at the very, very last minute. And I've actually since learned I ran into Emily Lehrman's uh, parents, you know, Dr. Lehrman, and uh, she actually went on to become an actress. I mean, she's studying acting. So, oh, wow. so uh, and, and they had actually mentioned to me, I, th I think that might have been one of the things that inspired her. Memory serves. Well, she must have been all oh, there. So my memory. Yo, she must have been what, like sixteen or seventeen and at the time, so. right? So and, she's got it. She's and Jesus we tweet the dialogue. The fact that you're saying, "Oh, you know, you look like you know." Well, well you know the line. You right, right, right. You look like you're. Yeah, I mentioned in sync. I guess so. It just goes with the times. I mentioned yeah. a boy band from that that period of time, but so she's got. This was twelve years ago, so she's got to be eesh, in her late twenties now. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, time is well. God, I mean, when you and I met in '99, my daughter was, you know, yeah. little, little tiny girl. She's now 17, driving a car in a senior high school. And you so were under 30. Flies. Well, Frank, you've got a kid now. In fact, yep. uh, you said your son just learned last night for the first time that you were in a movie. Yeah, when we were when we were uh, skyping yesterday, and uh, you were playing back some footage, he was standing behind me, and he's like, "Is that, that you? What are you? What are you doing to them?" He's like, what are you doing there? <laughs> so when do you plan on letting him see some scenes from it? When he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're not going to let him watch the jelly donut scene on his 16th birthday? This movie is 
completely inappropriate for children. Right? Yes, good idea, Frank. <laughs> and yet, the funny thing was when it was when it was shown in in Germany or distributed in Germany, it had it bore the symbol on it said. Uh, uh, not to be sold under 18, I believe, or 17, and every single bit of gore and nudity was cut from the movie. Yeah. 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 Some of the stuff has come out of there? Oh. <laughs> I have, and I think Frank's the one who showed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Some of the most evil things in the darkest parts of the internet come from Germany. <laughs> and I, and I, I remember, too, we, we have it, um, I think we put it on the DVD, was uh, I remember... Frank, uh, and you, you could tell the story best, was when you're, at the time she was your girlfriend, now your wife, when I, I, she, she'd seen the first movie and I guess there was a group of friends, the reaction? Uh, it was uh, utter horror, and I remember you had contacted me um, later because you wanted me to be in something else, another project you were doing with Mike, and she was like, that's it, yeah, <laughs> yeah you already have images and video that are going to live on the internet forever and to add to that no she was yeah she was like no way <laughs> you have disgraced our family dave <laughs> <laughs> but remember i i watched i i only remember shooting the scenes in that apartment building with you covering the full moon ride segment of the tenement so i didn't realize how much more of a body of work that this film really was until i got a copy of it and i watched it and i was Truly horrified. <laughs> but thankful yeah. that I wasn't involved in the other parts of the movie that were way, way more violent and yeah. sexual and also some other strange, goofy things. This is the lighthearted story right. in the tenement. Exactly. This, this <laughs> but Frank, were you aware that this movie was going to be distributed or did you think that this was just something for fun? I had, at the time, I had absolutely no knowledge of independent film or how it worked or how much. Um, Jim Glenn was as a movie maker, or how much he was had the ability to distribute this. I didn't know. I thought it was just some college project or whatever. And then the more I learned about it after I shot the scenes with you guys, I realized, holy crap, it's it's a legitimate movie. <laughs> as legitimate as you can get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But oh, legitimate well, in the fact that it, it we got distributed. We were available. Well, you can say we were. Yeah. At, at least back then, where we. Yeah. Were I mean, we've been on streaming video. We, you know, we were. Um, but before that, we were, when stores were the rage. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, before the internet really took hold. Yeah, it was it was a Netflix. In fact, you know, their plans to bring it back again. You know, to resurface it, put it out there because you know it's now out of print. You can find it on eBay. Uh, it's no longer officially distributed, but um, you know there's still copies circulating. I remember it's funny uh, a few years ago I was in San Francisco, and some little hole in the wall video place in San Francisco in Chinatown, and I walk in and there's two of the movies, including Tenement, yeah. sitting in, sitting in the budget bin. Every now and then it surfaces in Fye, you know. I'll go yeah, in and, yeah, yeah. And then what I do is you know what I'll do is I'll take the movie and I'll put it in front of like all the new big titles. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they move it back two seconds after. Well, I were leave, we but. in like Barnes and Nobles or Border? Mm -hmm. We in, in some of those stores, and at least back then it was it was the big thing. Now it, it's it's more of hey we're available on the internet and yeah. yeah anyone or if we're on Netflix it's like oh okay cool and that's we'll the thing that I mean it, as much as it's been distributed you know it, it's it's still hard to reach an audience and that's why when we did Tales of Light and Dark season one I said you know what let's let's switch to a web series let's put it out for free let's try and build an audience you know in the hopes to get sponsors and 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 bring a new audience in and, and bring in new characters kind of distance ourselves a little bit from the movies but you know there's some characters like the Jimmy Wayne Garrett character I can't really let go of because it's just a fun character to work with but you know I'm with Joe Loria who played the Black Rose Killer and Pete Barker who passed away uh, earlier this year who played the older Black Rose Killer you know it, it's just hard to kind of go back to those stories now and, and I couldn't see doing those you know direct continuations without those people so it's time for something fresh and it's also it's a tough thing because look we're, we're working on you know a micro budgets in most cases and you know to to expect people to have seen all the other movies and really get it and I think that was one of the issues with sins of the father because it was so connected to the other movies why it didn't do as well as say a movie like the tenement that had a little something for everybody in it so when we did you know the web series, I said, you know, I want to do different stories. Ultimately, they were kind of interconnected anyway, because I just love that. But um, you know, I, I think I think it's a way to reach a, a bigger audience. I mean, the internet and social media is, you know, it's it's created careers. So I'm hoping this will further light and dark. Yeah.
Yep, it's it's a different dynamic, but I think also creatively, uh, it's it's more freeing for for the artists because we don't necessarily have to bow down to any kind of distributor. Right. We don't have to change the movie around for better or for worse in order to get it distributed. We can just release it as is, yeah. uh, warts and all the way we want to release it. And there's my oh, ass. Warts and all, like your... Oh, look at that Warts ass. and all, like my ass. Oh, my. There's the full moon rising. It still holds up today, uh, oh. ladies. There's the full moon rising. Over yeah. years, I've known you, Mike. I never wanted to see or did see your ass well, until I watched this film. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. You're what welcome. What people don't realize, he's running across gravel. Yeah. And boy, did that freaking And hurt. I had a, a bag in front of my private parts. Because we're too low budget to have a Kirk. I, I, I remember this. Yeah, I, so. I think I think the old woman wanted to remove that bag. No, uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's the way. You know, I don't know what has happened to her. I haven't spoken to her. What are you years. saying? Just because she's a little older that she might. No, be no, dead? no. It's one of those people that you know. Sometimes you fall out of contact. I yeah. haven't spoken to her in many, many years. So. Yeah, but she didn't really want to remove the bag. I was kidding. Less than anyone think that I that I was serious. <laughs> Maybe you wanted her to remove the bag. Mm, you know, well. you like those cougars. Ha. <laughs> So, so Mike, since you're a veg, well, at the time were you a vegetarian? I was a vegan. vegan. Well, I still am a vegan, but I was yeah vegan back then. Yeah. And once so, again, this is what was soy, and we dyed like it his... to look like meat, and it's again, yeah. it smelled like shit. I didn't mind the taste. <laughs> I actually finished it. It was terrible. Yeah, wow. it was like the gimme lean fake meat protein, but it had the consistency of real. Of real meat, and I remember having a big argument because I wanted you to eat real hamburger. Yeah, well, you're, you're screaming, but you're a and fucking I said, well, idiot. Lightly cook it. And you're no, right, you know. no, no. I will never, ever eat raw meat in any kind Which of movie. Which is why eventually ever. we're gonna have a scene where we're stuffing raw meat down his throat. And it, if it's if it's fake raw meat, then fine, well, I will do it. Strap down. You know? No, <laughs> no. I mean, no. I tried to lose weight since this movie because I, you know, got some medical problems, or whatever. So I tried different types of like. Like I tried so furky. Nah. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, when I die, I will have a steak next to me. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. And, and no disrespect to vegans or vegetarians. But, but no disrespect. But, but I'm sorry. Any you know any, every time I'm like oh but you know try this it tastes just like me. No, it does not. Yeah. Well, it does not replace and, a well, good old fashioned burger. And that being said, I don't I don't really eat that kind of stuff anymore. Every once in a while, I, uh, I here we do, go. But, here but, we go. But I don't. I stay away from the processed stuff. I try to be healthy in my old age. My ode to Looney Tunes. <laughs> I remember there was a quote somebody out there. They they dug this scene specifically. They're like, any movie that can work in a Looney Tunes tie-in. Of course. There we go. Uh, would have been so nice if Frank had it shirt <laughs> off. <laughs> That's my favorite look right there. Right oh there. I know because it's a still shot. You can find on the web. You die well though. You do, and with the white shirt, it it really stands out. Yeah. One of the best parts of doing this scene was the the makeup. The makeup guy was so funny. And the stuff actually tastes pretty sweet. It's like sugar and yeah. stuff. high fructose corn syrup and mm -hmm. red dye. Yeah, it was Gene. Gene was yeah, the Gene, guy. Yeah, Gene Maza. Um, but the, the dude who made the Jason mask. Yes. yes. Yep, yep. He is, uh, that is his forte, is making uh, Friday 13th replica masks. Yep. Yeah, it this... took like a good 25 minutes to get that stuff all over me. And, um, yeah, that was definitely fun. Good old latex. <laughs> and yeah, was... it worked well. This is my Oscar moment. I wonder, uh, like, listening to the old commentary, how much we actually repeat ourselves. From, well, and like, this is a scene in the German scene, too, where literally your entire throat rip is completely cut out. Now, again, yeah. I have to ask, how the hell could the German movie make sense? There's, uh, like, whole scenes that are just cut right out. I don't, I, you know, I've never seen the German movie. And they even rescored it, too. And that, that's, that was the sucky thing about signing away my life on a contract that, you know, I was appalled when I finally got, and I couldn't even get a copy of the German copy. I had to go buy it myself. But when yeah. I finally got it, I'm like, they changed the friggin' score. Yeah. Sha Sha. Sha Sha. Leon Taylor, who, one of my favorite stories about Leon is I remember after we wrapped, he invited us to a foam party. And I'm like, well, what's a foam party? He goes, honey, it's a room filled with foam. And we just danced the night away. And he goes, <laughs> it goes, and you can't see what's going on, or something. That you're I'm just like, oh my god. Oh no. And of course, <laughs> Simon the Pimp, who is uh, the president of the Hudson Horror Show. You can go to HudsonHorror.com for one of the best kick-ass original all vintage 35 millimeter film festivals. Yeah. It yeah. is so weird seeing Mike with hair. It's like watching the old episode of Moonlighting when Bruce Willis. <laughs> yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. 
Yeah. Back then, I didn't think I would lose it. I thought I, I thought I lucked out. I thought I made it, you know, but I didn't. Damn genetics. Damn yeah. genetics. Oh man. Yeah, Lee. I, I remember to the night we were shooting about the uh, shooting this too. There was a homeless woman that showed up, and she started trying to direct over mm. her shoulder. And she like she'd start calling action, and she'd start calling cut. And I remember she asked whether or not that was a man or a woman. You know. She, <laughs> Well, I kept calling Leon. I I think towards the end of my time shooting with Leon, I called him she, and I think he took it as a compliment. He's like, "Oh, thank you." He's he's won awards. I'm sure he has drag queen awards. You know what is he up to? Have you? I, I, you know, I touch base every once in a while. He'll he'll ping me through Facebook, but mm. uh, you know, he still wants to work together, and I, I definitely would love to work with him again. You know, if we could find the right vehicle, that'd be great. Oh, I think we have a few. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, well, so speaking of, of this subject, what is um, the ten uh, full moon rising and its metaphor for uh, for homosexuality? Yes. Which I had no idea about, but apparently I must have caught the vibe because people automatically assume that Jimmy Jimmy was gay, and he could be. But uh, so why don't you explain that? Because I didn't get it the the first time I read the script. Well, after. I I mean I've always been, uh, you know. Interested in, in and look, I'm I'm a straight guy, but I've always been fascinated with what makes people tick, you know. And if you look at a lot of the serial killers, there is a lot of homoeroticism between some of the most famous serial killers. So that was something I kind of weaved in there, you know. I just thought it was interesting, you know. I, I, and and people still to this day, you know, close-minded fucks, you know, see it as such a sa taboo thing, you know, to to, to be homosexual. And you know what? So it's like, well, look, I even explored it in, you know, Fairview Falls a little bit. You know, of course, the twist turned out they were brothers, which makes it a little creepier. Spoiler alert, a little late. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I just thought it was kind of an interesting twist, you know, to kind of put that subtext in there and, um, you know, let, let the uh, the viewers, you know, I guess, take, take you know, take, make their own interpretations. But, yeah, Full Moon Rising, that, that's kind of part of the sort of, you know, it's, it, it's really embracing himself, embracing the animal with him, embracing his sexuality, mm. you know, and, it, and it's, it's just, uh, it, it takes that one traumatic event that we don't know if it was a wolf, if it was a dog, what it was, you know, that, to really bring out that inner self that right. he had repressed. So it's his uh, quote-unquote transitioning into a werewolf as a, a metaphor of coming out of the closet? Yeah, to some degree. Or I mean, the repression, I think, or the repression. Yeah, it's that... more about just it's more about full moon rising. Is really it's it's unleashing. It's the rise and, and release of that rep those repressed emotions. Whether right. they're homosexual, whether you know they're he's a serial killer. It's kind of, you know it, it can be interpreted in many ways. Yeah, but more than one person has come up to me and said, "Oh, was was your character gay?" And I. I, I never thought of it like that when I play. At least right. consciously, I didn't think of think of playing Jimmy that way. This that's just the way I played him. And um, though it's, I guess it's if, really interesting that 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 some people picked up on that. I, I think guess it's kind of cool. Yeah, I was gonna say. I guess though, if you wanted the answer, the be all end all answer, maybe I guess is if you look at Geo Killing, you know where uh, he hooks up with Sabrina Coleman's character. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I guess that, I don't that's know, the but, answer. But, but, who know, but who knows? That's something yeah, that can be explored. So, right. as so long as like, you get, as long as you get a cute guy, so I'll be what, all right. what you're saying is you'd like to have Frank come back and yes, man, passionate love. Yes, his Frank, corpse. Frank, how do you feel about that? How many times are you going to eat your gay roommate? I mean, seriously. Well, <laughs> May, can we can we do a sequel where he digs your dead body up and has sex with it? Uh, speaking of this, if if you were yeah. if you are going to release this movie, try to like CGI a more real looking hand. Hey, it came in handy. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'll be here all day. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, of course, we come to teasers, which is no more. Funny right. story about teasers, the Gentleman's Club, is that's, that's the real real place. Um, Anthony Eichner was, um, I think, the sort of security guy, you know, one of the Bouncer. bouncers, uh, who worked on the effects for Fear of the Dark, and that's how Glenn I... Glenn Sister-in-Law! Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that so wow, cool. that just totally threw me. <laughs> but yep, there she's again. Teasers later on burnt down, uh, but before it burnt down, when it was sold, the business was sold. It was a pizzeria, and somehow I could never bring myself to eat pizza in what was formerly well, it's shaped like a triangle. <laughs> oh, formerly oh, a strip club, uh, Cindeville. That's not Cindeville. You, the woman is Cindeville. Cindeville, yes, yeah. Cindeville. And, uh, of course, I, for, for those of you who haven't seen um, the original Tenement, this is a 
so a, a new director's cut. So there are more. We cut down the detectives. We cut out Michael Valenzano's Oscar character in the beginning because it's a standalone story. It didn't quite make so, so you know so much sense having him with his monologue in the therapy session. But encourage you to go out and find the full version of Tenement, and we're hoping to bring it again to you uh, on streaming video in the in the future. Well, thinking of the homosexual metaphor i mean he so, is a, he is in a strip club right now oh wait this is where I'm wrong, you're saying homosexual no let's preface that by saying sal is not homosexual no i if you let me finish no. i was going to continue that he's in a strip bar and and this beast comes out of him as a woman is uh is performing a lap dance for him and showing him uh what she has so she now i can say her sal because <laughs> that was bad timing on my right head. sal of course has uh, many appearances in hbo's oz and I actually just saw on Facebook last night, I had a picture with him and Julian Lennon, that lucky bastard. He's friends with Julian Yeah, Lennon. he knows yeah. everybody. He knows, he's you know, one of those guys who knows everyone. China yeah. Club reunion. So, yeah, Sal just is endearing. And it's like, you know, when I'm trying to come up with a character for Sal, it's like, what do you call him? It's a Sal. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, Brian Spears has often said, some of your sideline characters are often your best. And Sal had this little bit part. And we ended up working in, you know, a scene into Sins of the Father that referred to events that happened you know, years before, which ultimately led to him being the hero in, in Fairview Falls. But um, I love working with Sal. I want to work with Sal again you know, at some point in the future. But, um, yeah, that was that was a long, long night. Yeah. Um, a long night. I, we shot till the dawn. Mm -hmm. and, and just a note about my sister-in-law that you threw out before. <laughs> she was a trooper and stood in because the strippers there bailed. and didn't. Yeah. I'm like, well, we want to pay you. And strippers wouldn't get naked for money. Well, they probably just wanted to go home because it was four in the morning. They just wanted <laughs> so, to go home. But anyway, yeah. and so we, I, I had Ed uh, Shalinsky say, can you grab people off the street? And of course, he grabs two drunk girls. They come in and they're like, we're not getting drunk. And he has to bear hug them and drag them back out. So Judy said, just fine, whatever. And, you know, hopped on board and was a real trooper. Yeah, she's a sport. So it's a wonder my wife didn't kill me, but, you know. And a lot of people probably thanked you. But it turned out good, and she doesn't get naked. Right. Sin does. Yes. With some of the largest breasts. In fact, there was a quote from Impossibly one of built. Impossibly Cinderville. built. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Those things could take an eye out. So there was no way my character could have lived a little bit longer <laughs> until the after this. <laughs> Frank, for the sequel, he'll go back, and uh, you'll be... Uh, the, the corpse, his imaginary friend next to him. So, so we could shoot it. flashbacks that Frank has where you're giving Mike the lap dance. Right. Yeah, no, I can't go to strip club anymore now that I am uh, married. Right. <laughs> only under the pretense of an actual marriage and a bachelor party, am I not allowed to go back? And oh, there you go. I'm, uh, I'll am i get married, and there you go. You can. I do love this shot. One. Everybody else is all here. I know, I know. Yep. Ah, uh, the good old days. This was um, finished in 2002, but it wasn't released until 2004. Right. So Hence I remember the I had to, anniversary. Yeah, I remember I had to wait a while to see this. I was so looking forward to seeing how this would come out. That was a good kill. That's good. good. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, we should mention, too, that for this special edition we added in after, I think it was a wolf. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dun, dun, Thankfully, dun. Thankfully, the dun, dun, dun. Which I always thought was just funny yeah it's so cheesy that it's funny and it just it's, it punctuates the joke and we i was talked out of putting it in the original cut but we added it back in just I'm one of those things so we, glad it's back yeah in fact it was, it was funny because funny. because There's the other day running around in the strip club just be careful <laughs> well, it was funny because I'm, I'm driving across the other night with my with my daughter um and i think it was a wolf that ran across the street and i said i, I she goes, you know, I think it was a wolf. And I said, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and she probably just looked at you. Yeah, she's like, like, what the like, hell's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. You're my father. Ugh. Walter Eichner, who's now since moved south, which means we probably won't have the and opportunity to Ladies and gentlemen, a VCR TV. Yes. Damn you, Walter, for moving away. I want to do more with the detectives. Yeah. Maybe he's he'll be around to visit. So another Oscar moment of mine. And of course, this is a nod, if you haven't guessed it already, to the building of the glove in Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. There's a lot of nods. Glenn nods oh. a lot. Homage. Homage. You hate when I do that, too. It depends. It depends. But yeah, you, you do use o the word homage a lot in a lot of your commentaries. Yes. Yes. You always want to point that out. Which glove I guess was is built fine. by Brian Spears, who's since gone on to do some yeah. really incredible work. Stakeland, I Sell the Dead. 
you name we are what you are. Why am I saying that? He did a right? Walking Dead, the Walking Dead um, tour. What was that? The Walking Dead. Right, he did Dead. the zombies yeah, for the Walking the, Escape from the Walking Dead. Escape you know, from the, the Walking Dead. Just the entertainment. Room. Yeah. Um, Thing. I mean, he's just done some amazing work, and, and Pete Gurner actually worked on this. Yeah, both well. of them just get better. I mean, they yeah, just GNS get... effects or Gurner Spears effects. Yeah, they just get better and better amazing. as time goes on. Oh, okay. So, so this is Clint, but the guy behind him. Luckily, we're here to report that he is not dead. For many years, <laughs> we thought that this guy right here. Ryan we Hammer. thought that he was dead. We thought that he died, but luckily, he didn't. So, and here we go. Here's the new stuff. 13 years old. Boy, later. yeah, there, there I am. Jack Pruitt. Um, so if you haven't seen Open Call, do see Open Call. Uh, that would take place directly after this. That's from season one. And Jack is just, Jack is just terrific. Yeah. Terrific. And let me just say, I'm usually clean shaven. I, I grew my, what hair I have left and my wannabe beard out for the part. I'm very clean cut. I'm a clean cut individual. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a... Uh... And that's Jude Pasillo's hearse that we've used, and God, how many times? It was in Sins of the Father, where we pulled the plunger out of Jude's ass, because <laughs> we played a corpse. Uh, it was in... I'm just fascinated about just what years can do to the people. The short girl killer, the, the fake trailer. God, that, that hearse has been used in more stuff. I, I, I'm trying, I'm losing... Cat was in the tent of it? Glenn, I'm talking about how I age, and you're too busy oh, trying to remember I know, I stuff to that Jude has done. Forget Don't about you know that. this is about me? <laughs> God damn it. I love you, Jude. And your hearse. It, ha it handles very well. <laughs> little nod to what might be coming. Oh, another future. nod. No, for what oh. might be happening in a future. He's season. nodding to himself now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the audience is with us and not nodding off. Yeah, right. Right. Whacking off, fine. But nodding off, no. Whacking off to your full moon rising. <laughs> hey, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Yeah, the hearse is definitely like a phantasm thing for me. Oh, oh yeah, totally, totally, yeah. Totally. It's only a dream. You can't no. see it very clearly, but it's on the not. license plate it says, Embalm You. <laughs> and now we get to the credits. The slow moving credits. We uh, still have a lot of time to fill while and, these and credits And of course, I want to point out, too, slow. that um, we have um, Song Gloom Doom by Shinobi Ninja. And I want to thank the the, uh, the band for lending us the tune. Love their stuff. They had a credit sequence song at the end of the credits in The Haunted House 2. Uh, they've been, I think, on MTV and VH1, but they're very cool, up-and-coming band, so you definitely look out for them. I'm going to have to watch this movie again, only because the last time I saw it was about three years ago for, uh, well, now my ex-girlfriend. She wanted to see something that I've done, and I said, oh, you want to watch The Tenement? She said, well, what's that? And, and I put it on. And uh, I, I, she said it, it was it was pretty good. I mean, she liked watching my ass, so that was nice. Ah, but well, I and but I, I hadn't seen that movie years before that, and I just I haven't I haven't seen this this movie since. So it'd be nice to to go back to it. Yeah. And, well, and when check we it out. started doing this, and I, I upgraded it to HD, I, I have to say it was probably the first time I watched it in years. Yeah. It's nice to revisit every once in a while, yeah. but it's also good to move on and. You're, you're really stuff. shot this on mini DV, right? Yeah, we shot on a Sony mini DV camera. Now we switch. I'm still shooting on Sony, but shoot everything in high definition, which is why, you know, the footage looks so much cleaner at the end. Yeah, right. You know, and hopefully the sound is better on with with the newer stuff. You know, because uh, the sound for the for the tenement. I don't think we knew what we were really doing as far as I mean, we've sound. Come a long way. I mean, yeah. but that's part of the challenge working on you know small scale productions. It's a, it's a challenge. That's why it's important to support independent film. Yep, and constantly learn and constantly and the equipment's there to make really good high quality stuff now on your own. It's finally catching up yep. to where great quality stuff can be released. So keep making movies. And thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we hope to uh, have you all follow our future productions at www.lightanddark.net. Goodbye. Bye. Later.